Better than that. Happy Sabbath, church. It's indeed a joy to be back. It's been a long time. I, I see some faces. I still remember I was youth pastor here, 97 to 2001. And so it's so good to see the faces. If I start naming names and then I keep somebody else's name out, they're going to get mad at me at the end of church. So I just want to say it's good to see everyone's faces again. I look out there and I can see Brother Marcus out there again. And, and I can see the McMunns. And, and uh, see, I, I did what I said I wouldn't do, the, the Rosenquist. I see them. And, and so, and, and it's, oh, man, I see so many people. And then I forget names. Oh, I'm so sorry. But it's so good to be back. I had some wonderful times here under Pastor Bob. I see the Custers, of course. <laughs> all right. All right. And... Um, God is good all the time, is he not? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Now, y'all were all giddy when those toys were out, and so y'all all quiet now. Did it, did it make you tired? All right, come on, talk back to me, talk back to me. God is good, is he not? If God has been good to you, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, I want to thank uh, uh, Brother Nicholas for doing such a wonderful job. He is an all-purpose man. He is everywhere. Can we just give an applause or an amen to, to, to Brother Nicholas and for the job that he is doing? And thank you so much for inviting me. I'm, I'm here with my wife, Karina. Karina, wave your hand. She's representing the United States and Mexico and Mexico. Amen. And I'm here with my former chaplain, my, my chaplain in training and pastor as well, Pastor Paul Williamson and his wife. And if you can wave your hand as well. And so we're going to get into the word. We're not going to be too short to be accused of an essay and sermonette, but we won't be long so that you will fall over the dress, and that's not good either. So if you would turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, and we have chapter 20 and verse 13, 2 Chronicles, chapter 20 and verse 13, with technology, we used to would say, if you have it, say amen, I hear the turning of pages, but technology now, you just look up and there it is. Amen. We've come a long way. I shall read in your hearing. Can I get a little bit more volume on the microphone? Yes. Testing one, testing one. Yes. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. All right. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. 
May the Lord add a powerful blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. And my sermon this morning, the neutrality of unity. The neutrality of unity. Let us pray. To the most sovereign creator of the universe, and is your name in the Hebrew tongue, Yahuwah. Yah, the Most High, and to your only begotten Son in the Hebrew tongue, Yahusha, and to your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, in the Hebrew tongue, I petition thee, that I am not worthy to stand in front to deliver the word, but through the grace of your Son, I am here. We are here. Let my words be the words that are cooled and chiseled by your Spirit that it may not be my words, for they will go astray. But if it comes from you, and I get out of your way and allow you to do your thing, then those at the sound of my voice will know that your spirit is the one that rules in this place. And if there be any praise, any praise whatsoever, let it go to Calvary. In the name of your son, Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christo, I pray. Amen. Amen. The tale of the tape. I want y'all to listen really well here. The tale of the tape. A father had three sons who always argued. Every time he turned around, they were arguing, arguing, fussing, and fighting. We don't have people here that do that, right? You can talk back to me. It's all right. It's all right. You can talk back to me. Just don't cuss me out. You can talk back to me. And his sons argued and fought all the time. It bothered him. He was very discouraged and disillusioned. So he decided he was going to go and teach them a lesson. So you know what he did? He went out and he bought a bundle of sticks. And when he bought the bundle of sticks, he told, he got the bundle and gave the bundle to each one of his sons and said, break it. And the son said, we can't break it. He said, "Uh uh-huh. Then he took one of the sticks out. And then he gave one stick to one son, one stick to another, and one stick to another. And he said, break it, and they could easily break it. So he said, the lesson is this. When you band together, nobody will be able to break you. But if you are separated and you are isolated, you will have people coming in and breaking you every time. So the moral to the story is there is strength in unity. Strength in unity. Now, the definition of unity, we use this word all the time, but do we really know what it means? Unity, unity. What is unity? Unity refers to the state of being unified or joined together as a whole. It is a sense of oneness or harmony among individuals or groups where there is a shared purpose, understanding, or goal. Unity often involves cooperation, collaboration of a collective entity. It can be seen in various ways. Unity promotes a sense of togetherness, inclusivity, and solidarity, and is often sought after to achieve common objectives or overcome challenges. This is unity. But unity in and of itself, is it positive or is it negative? Unity in and of itself is neutral. We make it positive or negative, good or bad, right or wrong. That's what I came to talk about, the neutrality of unity. So unity is neutral. You're sitting in your car. You got it in neutral. You ain't going nowhere. You must decide, do I put it in drive? I'll go forward. Do I put it in reverse? I go backwards. So unity in and of itself, is neutral. Thus, my sermon is the neutrality of unity. 
which means there must be a decision somewhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to walk it down like a little kid in a candy store, okay? So we're going to take our time, but walk with me. Walk with me. So if we understand what unity is, let's understand what neutral is. In the context of this sermon, it means stagnant, indecisive, without progress, no forward movement, unable to make a change or to advance in one's current circumstances. It is a lack of motivation feeling of entrapment, no clear direction. In a sentence, it is, man, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm just stuck in neutral. What does that mean? I can't go nowhere. I don't know where I'm going, so I ain't going nowhere. Neutral. In the context of this sermon, it is in the negative. Now, when we look at unity again, Unity is this, it can be either bad or good, it is merely a state of being undivided. Oneness, coming together with others to accomplish a common goal. But that goal can be good, that goal can be bad, right or wrong. Just to say we have unity, you're not telling me everything. I know you're gonna be together, but are you gonna be together for the cause of righteousness? Or are you going to be causing some trouble? See, I'm a former probation correction officer. When I left here, that's what I did. So if you see some of that in me, yeah, it don't leave you, okay? So I know and I've seen unity good, unity bad. So if you just tell me we have unity at our church, that's not telling me anything. I got to know what kind of unity it is. Do you, do you understand? Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. Here we go. Here we go. So now what is our story? If you hear me use the term Yah, you know, Psalm 68, 4, that is his name in the Hebrew, the short version of Yahweh. Yah, okay? We're talking about the Father. Yahuwah or Yahusha, I'm talking about the Son. Okay. So now, 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 now. We're going to give the specs of what our verse is. We are dealing with the superhero of our story is King Jehoshaphat, okay? That right there is the hero of our story. King Jehoshaphat, first in the Hebrew, Yah is judge. Yah has judged. Yah is judge. That's what Jehoshaphat means. Let's give the tale of the tape of who he was. He was the fourth king of Judah, the southern kingdom. His father was Asa. He was a good king. His father was Abijah. He was a bad king. His father was Rehoboam. He was a bad king. And his father was somebody you guys know, the richest king to live and the wisest king to live. And what king was that? Say it again. Oh, man, I really can't hear you. One more time. All right. King Solomon. And Solomon had a father, and his father's name was? Oh, look. His father's name was? I'm so glad my mother named me that. Whew. So now we've established something. It's David first. And before David, it was? Ooh, we got some smart ones up in the house. Before David, it was King Okay, we're going somewhere. Don't think I'm crazy, but I'm crazy. I'm crazy like a fox. All right, all right, all right. So we have King Saul first, first king of the united Israel. Then we had King David, second king of united Israel. Then we had King Solomon, third king of united Israel, but Solomon acted out. He had a problem with the ladies. He loved him some ladies. Ooh, he couldn't turn around from looking at the ladies. And when he got with the ladies, he went out and he worshiped their gods. All the things his father taught him and the life his father led, Solomon messed up like we all mess up. But Solomon around, uh, see, when he wrote Proverbs, you knew he just had it all going on. That was just wisdom with no experience. 
that was just a gift from the Most High, and I'm just showing off. I'm going to tell y'all, dot, 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 dot. Everybody's coming from all over to listen to Solomon. But he went through something. He went through the wilderness of life. Life humbled him like it humbles us. So when he writes Ecclesiastes, you see a different man. So now, he has a son, Rehoboam, and because of his sins, the Most High said, I'm going to deal with your son. His son had an opportunity to do right, didn't, and the kingdom split with Rehoboam. With me, go work with me, work with me. I got to give you a little background so that you can understand this story. So Rehoboam, the kingdom splits. Ten tribes go to Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, whose capital was Samaria. And then two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, go to Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel. And Rehoboam was the king. Then Rehoboam has a son, Abijah. He was a bad king. Rehoboam was a bad king. Now Abijah has Asa. Asa was a good king. And Asa has Jehoshaphat. So now we're at Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat's name is God has judged. King Solomon, Israel's wisest and richest king, led Israel into apostasy. But brother pastor, I hear that word all the time. What does it mean? It is simply this, turning aside from following God and denying him after having previously confessed him as Lord. Falling away from faith under persecution. Living a life of open sin. Open sin that denies the faith, abandonment of the law, statutes, and precepts of God. This is apostasy. As a result, God split Israel into two kingdoms. Each kingdom committed apostasy against God. Each kingdom had many evil kings and very few good kings. King Jehoshaphat was a good one. He was like his father. He led Judah from idolatry. Understand that. He led Judah to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He led them into righteousness. And when you do that, we make God blush. He blushed. You're establishing a relationship. He led them in prayer. He led them in reading the Torah. He led them to God. They were unified under their king to worship the king. But you know, whenever you have a relationship with the Lord and you walk in right with the Lord, he tests you and Satan tempts you. God tests you to prove your fiber. Satan tempts you to trip you up. And so as close as Jehoshaphat was leading God's people, God had to test them. Satan had to tempt them. And oh, one day, one day, we talking about unity, y'all, right? Unity, the neutrality of unity. Is it good? Is it bad? Which one? Tell me something. We're uni- we unify today all of the beautiful flags and the colors and the languages. We have unity today. But is the unity good or is the unity bad? When you leave here, are you going to follow God? Are you going to Follow somebody else. You just unified in church. But we're going to save that for a little bit later. And so here, someone comes to King Jehoshaphat. Just like in our lives when we're trying to walk right and trying to do good. What do they say? If you're not having any head-on collisions with the devil, that means he sees you as one of his own. But the day you decide you want to have a good relationship with him, he declares war on you. And you start having head-on collisions with the devil. That's because he sees you as an enemy to his kingdom because you're playing ball on God's team. And so his goal is to take you out. So the closer you get, that's when all of your problems start. Because you're trying to have a relationship with God. You're trying to read your word. You're trying to pray. How dare you? And, not, and Satan not declare war on you. You dare to do that? He says, okay, we got them, y'all. Stop leave, leaving them alone in the clubs. We already got them. We got to get the folk in the church because they dare to have a relationship with him. And so Jehoshaphat is doing good, doing right. A righteous king. He gets the word from someone and says, hey, 
There's a unified coalition of, of nations that's coming after you, homeboy. Sorry, I, I, I used to work in the prison, all right? <laughs> they coming after you. You best to get ready because, homeboy, they, they some powerful folk now. They the Ammonites, Edomites, and, and they the, they, they, they're also the Moabites. They coming after you. So just like with us. We, we, we first get it, fear comes in it because we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, no matter how close we are with God. When we hear things, certain things, we react because we're humans. And so when he heard it, he got afraid. But when you establish a relationship with God, you remember where your help comes from. Your help comes from God. So if you're used to having a relationship, you're used to going up and down, but you know someone who never changes has always been there for you. You can be scared for the moment, but when you realize who you belong to, that's who you go to. And so when he heard that, he went through fear. So the first thing he did, he gathered his nation together. He said, come on, y'all, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. How many of y'all do that? You go through problems, y'all start cussing, right? You start cussing, then you start saying, Lord, why? You said you, I wasn't going to go to. You start complaining. Huh? How many of you hear a problem? You got the doctor tells you something you don't want to hear. Hmm? Your kids speak to you in another language that's not respectful, if you know what I mean. You go through some people at your job talk to you in a certain way or treat you a certain way. People at the church. Can I say it again? People at the church treat you bad. You ready to give up? You're angry. Lord, why me? We complain. Joseph didn't complain. He started to pray. He started to fast because he had a relationship that he had already built. And so he went to his prayer closet, huh? Where the rug is already burned in. Why? Because he's always there, huh? And he went and he prayed. Lord, I, I can't do this on my own. I can't do it. And then, and then he led all the nation. They started worshiping, worshiping him. Instead of running away, woe is me, they were all unified to follow this king who was unified to follow the king. And when he did, he prayed. Oh, man, and he prayed. Y'all want to hear the prayer he prayed? Uh, let, 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 me, let me show you the prayer he prayed. I want y'all to turn. Turn right here. Turn right here to stay in 2 Chronicles. We're going to go with verse 5. 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 5. 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 5. When you're in trouble, this is the kind of prayer you pray. You make God blush. You remind him of the things he did for you. Don't just be going with all this faithlessness. You go with some faith. I know what you did for me when I couldn't pay that bill. I know when I had cancer. I know what you did for me yesterday, and you still that same God because my Bible says so. When you do that kind of stuff, you remind him of the goodness he's done, you make him blush. And boy, when he blushes, guess what? Blessings come down. Say, boop, boop. Oh, wow. God, you so good. You was good on me for last Thursday. Boop, another blessing. God, God, I remember how you helped me pay my car. No, boop, there's another. Oh, God, you so good. Remind him of what he's done for you, and you still believe that he will do it again. And when you pray like that, oh, you better get ready. You better get that umbrella out because blessings are about to shower down on you. Here's that prayer. Let me tell you that prayer. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles uh, 20 and 5. So when he heard it, he didn't complain. Here's what he said. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. Unified, y'all. Unified. In the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, oh, Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Look at that. Look at that. Look at, look at what he's doing. And you do not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? He's letting them know, God, you all that. You know that, God? You are all that. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Forever, forever, ever, ever. And 
they hell right now, and they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. You see what he's doing? He's reminding him of his promises. Jehoshaphat is standing on those promises. And let the next one, next one. And now, now then you present God after you, after you remind him that you trust him and you believe that he'll do whatever you ask if it's his, if it's his, his blessing. What you, you then do, you present him with the problem. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Those are the Edomites. That's Esau's kids. Whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, those confederate nations that are unified together, but their unity was negative. Rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Give me, give me, give me one more verse. Our eyes are upon you. Come on, do I got one more verse? One more, let's squeeze it out. Let's squeeze it out. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Can, 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 we, give, can we give the audio people, can we give them an applause? Because they're doing, man, they... Because I'm so crazy up here, man, and y'all doing a good job. I right, thank you. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children stood before the Lord. That was our first verse when we started. So he prayed a prayer, and his prayer was telling the Most High what he had already done for them. So they, we're coming to you, Lord, because we, we know that you've already worked for us before. So we're going to ask you again. Why? Because we believe you. We trust you, and we know you, we, you love us. That's what that prayer was all about. And as soon as he finished with that prayer, and remember, all Judah and Jerusalem was united with him. Remember that. And do you know what happened when he got done with that prayer? You see, the Most High was blush. Remember what I told you? When you do things that's pleasing to him, you make him blush. And when he blushes, blessings come down. So as soon as he got up, Saying that prayer in the midst of all the people, what happened in the form of a blessing? Jehaziel, Jehaziel. And you know in the, in, the, in the Hebrew, that means God sees. God sees. This, you can't even make this stuff up. God sees. He was a seer. That's what they used to call the prophets back in the day, that you can see into the future through the Holy Spirit's power, okay? Not any other kind of power. So they used to call the prophets in those days seers. Because they can see the future, or they can see in time, in time things through the Holy Spirit. And so his name means Yah sees, Jehaziel. You know what he's saying? God had given him a word. Because Jehoshaphat and a united southern kingdom of Judah with Jerusalem as their capital were all united to follow this man who followed the man. And so Jehaziel said, I got a word. I got a word. Tomorrow, you take your people to this place, and you stand there and you watch because the battle is not yours. God's going to fight that battle for you. You ain't even going to have to just get your stuff on, but you ain't going to have to get your uniforms dirty because you're not going to be doing the fighting. God is. And so the next day, when, when, when King Jehoshaphat heard that, you know what he did? He continued to pray. He got the Kor, 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 uh, Kor, Korhathites, Korthites, and all of the ites. He got them that could sing. You can sing. You can sing. You can sing. Go on over here and sing. And they got together and they started singing, singing praises. And, and as blessings and praises were going up, blessings started come down. They started worshiping, y'all. They should have been scared on paper. 
they should have been scared and defeated because this was a coalition of folk, the Ammonites, the, 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 the Moabites, the Edomites. They were some bad boys. They were coming in united to do some wicked things. And the first thing they wanted to do is take out Jacob's children. I'm going somewhere with that. And so there they are. On paper, they should have been scared. But we deal with a God that don't deal with paper. He's a real God. So he fights the wars for real, not on paper. And so the next day, as they're singing and praising, they go down to the Valley of Tekoa so they can watch and stand there and watch. But they still singing. they still worshiping. When you worship him, what are, what are we learning from here? That's, that's, that's what he wants from us, is our worship. And when we do, it's almost like we're tickling him, and he blesses. And when he blesses, somebody's going to get blessed. You worship him. You praise him. You tell him what good he's done in your life. And guess what? He's going to do more when you got that attitude. And so they watched. And as they stood there to watch, guess what? The coalition, the united forces of the Ammonites, the Moabites, the, the, the Edomites, they came together and they were ready to do some work. Now, you know, y'all, let's break it down. The Ammonites and the Moabites, if I could say it in my St. Louis slang, them, them Lot's kids, huh? Those are Lot's kids. Lot was the nephew of Abraham. And we do know Judah, that was the fourth son of Jacob, whose name was turned to Israel. Huh? And the Edomites, Mount Seir, who lived in Mount Seir? Edom. Edom is Esau, Jacob's brother. We talking about family. Family fighting one another. That don't happen with child, does it? Family. They fighting, killing each other. See, when you read that word, you're going to really break it down and realize it's the greatest book in the world. 17 years in a row, I've read the Bible in a row. I got a Bible reading plan that will blow your mind. If you want to know it, you email me and I'll give it to you. Everywhere I go, I talk about this Bible reading plan. You read three chapters a day. Jan uh, 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 Genesis 1, uh, January 1st, uh, December 31st, you're finishing up. Revelation 19, 20, 21, what not. and you'll realize, wait a minute, this is the greatest book I've ever read. If you want to laugh, they got a donkey in there that talks. And a man talking back with the donkey. Hitting them and, and, and hitting them and arguing with them. And then they got, they got where a man stole another man's wife. And then tried to, and got him killed. If y'all like novellas, what? What? You got better than novellas. General Hospital, I know I'm aging myself. Dynasty, One Life to Live. Come on, come on, anyone, 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 anyone. Sold, all right, y'all remember those stories. If you want that, it's in the Word. You read it. You want to laugh, read the Word. You want to cry, read the Word. You want to know the greatest story ever told, read that Word. And if you want that Bible reading plan, I'll give it to you. And you're going to say, man, I want to thank that bald head man from coming to our church and showing me this. Because I'm telling you, you're going to forge a good relationship with the Lord. And what happened? They watched. Family, getting ready to fight family. And they were in the field. And just then, just then, the Most High worked. Why? Because they were still singing. They were still praying. They were still praising him. And when that happened, you know what he did? And he got all kind of ways to do it because he's God and there's none else. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. You know how he decided to do it? He made them fight each other. And the Judah, they were just sitting there. Uh, 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 King Jehoshaphat and all Judah just sitting there watching. Because remember, the battle wasn't theirs. The battle belonged to the Lord. And he saw them. They saw them wipe each other out. When they killed each other, no man escaped, the Bible says. After it took them three days to get the spoil, to bless their nation. So God not only destroyed their enemies, he put a little something in their pocket. So what does it show us now? That when you are obedient, when you worship him, when you keep him first, he blesses you. It's not that hard, y'all. Put him first. Praise him. Give him his place in your life. When you do, 
he will shower down blessings upon you. And as I close, uh, my subject is the neutrality of unity. What does that mean? With neutrality, we told you that's neither good nor bad. But when you have unity, you got to make a decision. Because if you want to follow the Lord, you can't be neutral. <laughs> you can't sit. I'd rather you hot or cold, but not lukewarm. Y'all remember that verse? You can't sit up there and say, well, I, I'm undecided. I, I, yeah, say that when he breaks the cloud. Lord, I was undecided, but now I'm decided because I see you. <laughs> I see you, Lord. <laughs> okay, all right, I see you. No, no. No, no. Too late then. You got to make a decision. You can't be on the fence. You can't say, I'm going to be neutral. I'm just going to look at it and see which side I want to be on. You better get ready now because tomorrow is not promised for you or for me. The neutrality of unity, when you're united, you better you be united on the winning side. If you want to live forever, forever with your Savior, you better be united on the winning side. Sometimes that means you're going to be talked about. Sometimes that means they're going to reject you. Sometimes that means that people are going to lie on you, slander you, but you have determined that if my Savior can suffer, who am I? And when you do, there's a prize waiting for you. When you decide, I'm going to unify myself with the Savior. I don't want to be neutral anymore. I don't want to fight on Satan's team. I want to fight on the winning side, and that's the Lord's team. I want to be a little Jehoshaphat. I want to lead my family in worship. You men out there, you lead your family in worship. And if there's no man in the home, you women, you lead your children in worship. Because that is the key that opens up their blessings is when they worship God. They put him first. So whenever problems that comes your way, not when, not, not if, when, they lying on you on the job, lying on you at the church, lying on you in your family, lying everywhere, every which way, every turn you turn, 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 time you turn around, you lie. But I'm here to tell you, they lied on our Savior. How did that work out? He's coming back, y'all, soon and very soon. The neutrality of unity means if you're going to be unified, be unified for righteousness' sake. Don't be unified just for unity's sake. Because I was a correction officer teaching the inmates the love of God. My coworkers unified to say we got to get Johnson out of here. Why? Because about 11 jobs were connected to one inmate. So if that inmate, if recidivism is low, if that inmate feels like he's actually loved by God and a child of God, when he gets out, guess what? I don't need to be locked up no more because Mr. Johnson said I'm a child of God. So I'm going to go and get baptized and go to church and sing and get a job. and I'm gonna do. So they're not coming back in big numbers. So my coworkers got mad at me. We got to get Johnson out of here because he's making them think that they are somebody. So what did they do? They unified. They came together. See, unity in and of itself does not always mean positive. They got together, a la Daniel. And when they got together, they talked about me. They did all kinds of things. And you know how the Lord delivered me? How I found out? How I was able to go to the conference office because I was going through uh, uh, religious liberty issues and all that. You know who helped me? The Lord sent the inmates to help me. It was the inmates. They said, we know you love us. Uh, Officer Johnson, we got your back. If anybody bothering you, and they sent somebody to my house one day. One night, I'm coming in, and they and I saw a Trans Am. Yeah, I'm dating myself. I saw a Trans Am out there. There's a Trans Am watch there. There's a Trans Am watch. The windows were up. Car came. One o'clock in the morning, I came home late from a pepper spring on our unit. And when I was there walking, I knew something wasn't right. Had my backpack on. And as I'm walking past the trash can, but they weren't going anywhere. I look, and you just feel, when you get around the inmates, they'll tell you their story. So you kind of knew. I said, uh-oh, -uh, this might be my time. And I was nervous. I was scared. But you have this thing where there's fight or flight. And I was always fight. So I knew I wasn't going to run. So if this is my last time, I don't want them to say, hey, he ran crying like a chicken. No, 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 no. Watch out, watch out, watch out. So I decided. See, if you're going to do what you're going to do, do it. So I put my back up against the back of the, where the trash can was. I was nervous, and I said, Lord, I, I got some more stuff to do for you. <laughs> I, I'd like a little bit more time. 
and I'm praying while, while the, and, and, and you can, in your mind, you could see the, the tinted window just come down just a little bit and how the inmates told me they did and the gun just, and I knew it was going to happen. But I kept praying, Lord, give me more time. I want to give my talents to you. There's so much more, Lord, I want to do for you. Don't let it end like this. Let me tell people what you've done for me. Give me more time. And as I'm praying, I said, do what you got to do. You know, because that, that flesh is still in you. You know, you got to be a man. You know, do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to do. But I'm praying, Lord, Lord, Lord. All of a sudden, and drove off to the gate. And y'all know how it takes, like, the gates move like an iceberg? I'm standing there hoping that they can hurry up and get out the gate. The gate just, and I'm like, oh, Lord, is this the patience of Job? Is what you want me to have? I, the gate is not moving fast enough. Lord, I, oh, 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 oh. I, well, I don't need to go to the bathroom anymore. I said, Lord, please let the gate move. Please, Lord, let the gate, and the gate move. I said, oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So next day I went to, 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 to work, and I told the inmates. I said, you know what? Somebody sent something out to get. They said, who? Who? What happened? So the one, that, the one inmate that was running things and I let him have, I let him help me, he said, Officer Johnson, come here. Who? What happened last night? They told me something happened. And I told him, I said, it's all right. God will take care of you. He said, remember that text you said, God moves in mysterious ways and God does this? He said, well, yeah, just, just, just relax. You're going to be all right. Next thing I remember, the person who I thought did it transferred to another state. I heard that inmate made a couple calls, if you know what I mean, and the problem was gone. What am I saying? The Lord blessed me in that situation, and he had others to take care of it. The Lord blessed Jehoshaphat, and he had his many ways the Lord can deliver you when you have a, a relationship with him. When you pray every day, when you, and it starts, just read the word. I can give you the Bible reading plan. So when the judgment day comes and you say, well, Lord, I, I, I didn't know. He going to flash it on the sky. He going to flash my big head, slanty eyes, and, 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 and my big old nose. He going to say, yep, remember when he came to your church? Remember when he came to your church? He told you about a Bible reading plan that would allow you to read three chapters a day, and you were too busy for that. I'm telling you, if you want it, hit me up. But here it is. Jehoshaphat put him first. He unified for the cause of glory. When you are united, make sure you are united for the cause of the cross and not for Satan because there is a great controversy going on between good and evil and the Lord is giving us time to get things right. And if you think that you're going to live forever on this sin sick world, you got something coming because you don't know if today is your last day. There were people here, I declare, that are here in this life yesterday and they're gone today. And God has blessed you to have another chance at life. And if so, you better look at what Brother Jehoshaphat did. You better praise him. You better put him first. And you better not stay neutral. Pick a side. And I will tell you, if you pick the right side with our Savior, you will one day live forever. I'm closing. I'm closing. Oh, 2,000 years ago, that's what he did. 2,000 years ago, he came down here. He came down here as a little baby. He came down here to say, you know, I'm going to be the exclamation point to the plan of redemption, the plan of salvation, to reinstate man for what Adam, the first Adam, lost. And he came in a three-year ministry that turned the world upside down. They talked about him. They slandered him. They tried, they tried many times to kill him, and he just kind of vanished. But then in the very end, they did kill him. Three days, he was in the grave. But he rose. He rose. And he said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? He conquered death for you and for me to one day live with him forever. We see these beautiful homes down here in, in South Orange County. But imagine how the homes look on Amen and Hallelujah Boulevard. Imagine how, what those mansions look like. Ah, and John tells us, John 14, that he made those, huh? 
And he put our names on those matches. And I heard, somewhere I heard, the streets will be paved with gold. The walls will be jasper. We'll be able to run and not get faint, walk and not get weary. I always wanted to surf with the sharks. That day will be coming. Huh? I always wanted to ride the lion. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. That day is coming. Don't you want to be there? Are you going to let the cares of this world keep you down here? Make the devil make you think that what's here on this earth is more important to the earth made new. Is that what you want? All the struggle you're going through and you're going to end up lost? Huh? Come on. He's made heaven cheap enough. He's done all the work. You just got to say yes and do your part. And when you mess up, when you fall, because we all going to fall, don't fall on your face in life. Because if you fall on your face, you can't see who's there with their hands out to help you. So when you fall, fall on your back so you can look up and see your Savior saying, I got this, like he told Je Jehaziel. I got this. The battle is not yours. It is mine. He lifts you up, puts you aside, and he steps in the ring. And we all know he's going to win. So if you here, don't be neutral. Put the car in drive. Say, Jesus, Yahusha, I want to be on your team. I want to be saved. I want to be in that number. And if you want that, I ask you to come on down. If you want, I'm going to open the doors of the church. We're not going to just run out of here because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. If you want to make a relationship with him and you say, Lord, I want to get baptized. I want to be in that number. Why don't you come on down? Why don't you come on down? I won't be long. But if you want to forge a relationship with the Savior, you're tired of being neutral. You're united on the wrong side. And you want to be united on the right side. I ask that you make a decision. Don't be neutral now. But I ask that you make a decision on the right side and come on down. Say, Brother Pastor, I want to get baptized. I want to get baptized. I'm tired of living the life I'm living. I want to go home to you. I want to start reading my word. I want to start praying and getting around people that are moving in the same direction you are. Because if you stand around the wrong folk and you're trying to read and study, you're going to end up back like them. But if you want to change and you actually want that relationship with him, you got to leave those folk that's bringing you down. And you got to get around folk that's moving in the same direction you are. And it's not neutral. It's drive. If you want that drive, I ask you, come on down. Just a few more moments. Anybody, young man, woman, boy, or girl, Brother Pastor, I want to give my heart to the Lord. I'm tired of living this life. If that's what you want, come on down. Come on down. Is there anyone? All right. Let us bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you. Help us to know that, Father, when we unify, we want to unify for righteousness' sake. We want to unify and put it in drive and not neutral. We definitely don't want reverse. We want to unify under the blood-stained banner which was shed by your son on Calvary's tree. We want to be on the winning side. Help us not to be neutral but to be in drive because tomorrow is not promised, but you've given us today and we thank you. Let that we keep this Sabbath holy and Father, we uphold your word because your word will never pass away. Help us to be prepared for that day when you come again that we may say, this is our Lord. We have waited for him and he will save us. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us, doing for us, and will do. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. God bless you.